tracking maneuver has started. About 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from MRO. UHF is good. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance is safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. At this point, the descent stage has flown away to a safe distance. Perseverance is continuing to transmit direct through Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to Earth. Yay! So, success! It looks as if the Perseverance rover has landed on Mars. You can see NASA scientists celebrating the end of all of their hard work. This was the outcome they were hoping for, they were praying for. Derek Pitts and Bill Harwood are still with me. So, tell us. You guys knew what we were watching. Uh, you know, you had a lot better insight into what we were watching than we did. Derek, did that go off without a hitch, or were there some questionable moments? Oh, I think it was incredible. I think it all went very well. You know, they certainly were prepared for instances where maybe the tone lock was lost or the direct signal back to Earth from the spacecraft was lost because they had other ways of communicating with some of the other suites of satellites that are flying over, you know, around Mars. But I, I think the thing that really caught my attention was that they were able to confirm the landing site that they wanted so quickly after turning on uh, the terrain uh, registering navigation system. It's really amazing how quickly that worked. It's so wonderful to see the sheer joy of all these NASA scientists who have undoubtedly given so much of their lives leading up to this point. To see them celebrate just makes us all so happy. Um, Bill, NASA's rovers seem to have some unexpected lifespans. Some have very short lifespans, but then others, like Opportunity, end up surviving well past their expected time on Mars. How long does NASA expect this particular rover? over to last. Well, Perseverance, like Curiosity before, it has a nuclear generator on board. It's not a reactor. It generates electricity by converting the heat produced by the decay of plutonium-238 directly into electricity. Remarkably, it generates about 110 watts, which doesn't sound like very much, but you add a couple of batteries on board as well, and you've got enough to run the rover. Um, hopefully, it'll last many, many years. The, the design life is two Earth years or one Martian year, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Perseverance is still going 10 years from now. It's a very capable spacecraft. And Derek, Perseverance is the third spacecraft, is that correct, to arrive on Mars just this month, following visitors from the United Arab Emirates and China. Uh, it sounds like a lot of traffic up there. Do we need some air traffic <laughs> controllers? And what do we know about those missions? <laughs> well, well, it's the third spacecraft to arrive at, to, to arrive at, at Mars, but the first, the only one of those three to actually land on the surface. The other two are in orbit, and those other two uh, spacecraft are doing uh, surface observations and reconnaissance of the Martian surface, uh, and they will be collecting information to send back to Earth as well, but they're not landing on the surface of Mars, so they won't be doing uh, the incredibly sophisticated work that Perseverance is doing. Uh, but, you know, when you think about what's actually there, you know, Mars, in a sense, in some ways, you could say it's getting a little bit crowded. <laughs> Not really, because there is so much space. But there are a number of spacecraft in orbit around Mars. There's a suite of five satellites that, uh, uh, that are already there that are used for communication from rovers on the surface of Mars back to Earth. Uh, these other two spacecraft that have arrived this month are, are there as well. And the other rovers that are down on, on the surface, this is the one planet in our solar system that has had the most attention, uh, more so than any other planet. There's no other place in the solar system that has as many uh, spacecraft down on the surface other than the moon. Uh, so, uh, but, the, but the so promise exciting. of what we can find is really exciting, yes. 
I just want to point out that we were looking at images, I'm sure it'll come back up, images of Mars from the rover. Bill, I think you were eager uh, to explain exactly what we were looking at. Yes, it's really, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's confirmation that the rover did in fact land in one piece with all its systems working. These are pictures from forward and back, what they call has cams, hazard cameras that they use to scout out the path in front and behind the rover. They still have their dust covers on, so there's a little bit of debris that was kicked up by those landing rockets. But you are seeing the surface of Mars from Perseverance. I can't think of a better way to cap this landing. It's just spectacular to get these pictures back right away, showing it survived those seven minutes of terror and is able to do its thing and send pictures back. It's just a remarkable moment. I think it's also it an incredible It is so testimony. exciting. I was just going to say, I think it's an incredible testimony to the uh, success of the technology that those images could be sent back to us so quickly. Uh, it's a great, as Bill says, it's a wonderful confirmation, but that we have them already. I wish I could have my pictures uh, as uh, easily available for me as these seem to be. Amazing. It is amazing. Now, of course, we know that the goal is not just to take pictures. There are samples that are going to be taken uh, by the Perseverance. And, and Bill, how will those samples make it back to the scientists at NASA who want to study them? Well, that's going to take another mission to come pick the samples up that Perseverance saves, but I've just got to stop for a second and back up to think about these pictures. You're seeing a relatively flat surface. There are no huge boulders or big sand dunes where the thing could get bogged down. You really don't know exactly where it's going to land until it gets there. And these initial pictures we're seeing are... are Fantastic, because they show that it did, in fact, land in a safe area, which means it's going to be able to go and collect those samples uh, that you're talking about. So the rover has a very mechanically complicated system inside to take the rock and soil that's collected by a drill on the end of a robot arm. It'll feed those rocks and soil into the rover. They'll be packaged into these lipstick-sized containers and placed at various points on the surface of Mars. They will be retrieved and picked up by another rover later this day decade, fired up into orbit around Mars, captured by a spacecraft and sent back to Earth. It's an incredibly challenging sequence of missions, but man, they are off to a good start. Just phase one, but a, a very successful phase. So I, I want to get final thoughts from both of you. Derek, is there anything else that you want to say or comment on about this exciting moment? Well, this has been extraordinarily exciting, and this success is really wonderful. The thing we have to keep in mind is that this is just the beginning of an extraordinary mission over the next two Earth years. Uh, this rover uh, cruising around on the surface of Mars in this particular location, looking for those possible past signs of microbial life. So as this mission rolls on, this information, of course, is going to be accessible to everyone through NASA's website, and we can follow right along as if we're riding along on the rover. So we have an exciting two years coming up. Absolutely. Very good point that we can all follow along uh, with the NASA scientists. And Bill, anything final you'd like to add? I'm overwhelmed. Uh, you know, the complexity of this landing was so extreme. You think, well, they made it with curiosity. What are the odds they could do it twice in a row? For all of this to work exactly as they planned, or at least so it seems so far, it's just a remarkable achievement. There's no other country in the world that can put missions like this together and pull them off. And it's a, it's, it's, as Derek said, it's a remarkable first step on the most challenging mission on Mars they've ever attempted. The enthusiasm is infectious. There are few things that make me happier than successful science. So this was a very happy afternoon indeed. Thank you so much for joining us on this exciting afternoon. Derek Pitts and Bill Harwood, we appreciate your insight.